glory be to God in the highest for a day like this. You are all welcome to this edition of Let's Talk. Let's Talk 129. We have been, we have been discussing about praying with results, looking at the life of Jesus Christ. So today, we are trusting that God will speak to us and speak to those who are watching us from all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking your time to watch this broadcast. Uh, you know, the time invested in God's presence is not a waste of time. So let's get ready as we look at how Jesus Christ prayed and he was able to see results. God bless you. So listen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hi, everyone. Yeah. Let's continue our let's talk today. We've been treating John 17. We've been taking some of the verses, looking at the contents of this prayer, talking about the priestly prayer or the farewell, farewell prayer that Jesus Christ prayed. And we know that we believe that those prayers were answered because he always prayed according to the will of the Father. Jesus Christ always prayed according to the will of the Father. And even if his will was struggling with him, the will of his soul, he will always make sure, as we can see, that there was a time that he was, his will was struggling with him, his flesh was struggling with him, that he should not go to the cross, that he should not go to the cross. But we know that he was able to overcome by praying through. Oh, yes. He was able to pray through and therefore go to the cross because he was supposed to go to the cross, be crucified, to be punished in our place and to be raised up so that we too can be raised up and to live a newness of life. So we are just going to continue now. John 17, we are looking at verse 17. John 17, verse 17. John 17, verse 17. Please, can we open our Bibles, please, if you have your Bible handy. John 17, verse 17. This is part of Jesus' prayer. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So this was Jesus' prayer point. That the disciples, and even those that were to come after the disciples that he prayed ahead that we should be sanctified by the truth of the Father, by the word that the Father has sent through him. They should be set apart. Yes. What does sanctify mean? Sanctify means to separate or to make holy or to set apart individuals for the service of God through the truth, which is which through the service of God, through the truth, which Jesus received from the Father. Oh, yes. John 17 verse 8 confirms this. John 17 verse 8 says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou did send me. So the words of truth that Jesus Christ gave to the disciples, they believed it. And so because of that, he now prayed further that they should be sanctified. Oh, yes. So the next prayer point was that they should be sanctified. They already believed in Christ. They believed that the words that he was speaking forth were not his words, but the words that he had received from the Father. And this is what was to set them apart as well as set us apart. Oh, yes. this, was the, this was the prayer point while he was still on earth, both for the present disciples and those who would believe through their words, through the words of the disciples that they will speak because they too were to come and to speak the truth. Oh, yes. We know that Jesus Christ is the truth. So if we believe on that truth, through the disciples' testimonies, then we too 
will be set apart. Oh, yes. We too will be made holy, mm. set apart for the work of God, for the ministry, for the service of good of God. So this is what he prayed, and we believe that he, the Father, heard this particular prayer. So that means as many as believe on Jesus today, that believe that truth, believe that Jesus Christ was sent by the Father mm. to come and save us, to set us free, to bring reconciliation to the Father through him, as many as believe. For the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, oh, that yes. whosoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So the thing, the key there is belief. And because mm -hmm. we have believed, that means that we have been sanctified. We don't need to now say that we want to go and do a different kind of sanctification, that, oh, we now believe we have received Jesus Christ, we have received salvation. That means that we now need to go and do a second work of sanctification. Mm -hmm. Once we have believed, because Jesus Christ has already prayed it, we are already sanctified. Oh, yes. The prayer point was answered because today, once we believe, once we have faith, we automatically receive the inheritance of sanctification. We also receive other inheritance. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1.30. Yeah. Hmm. We don't pray the prayer of sanctification. We are already sanctified. We are already set apart. We have already been made holy for the service of God, for the work of the ministry, once mm. we have believed. Mm. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So he has been made unto, it's not that it's going to be made, mm. or they're still in the process of making, but we have been made through Christ Jesus, through faith in Christ Jesus, we have been made wisdom, we have made been made on righteousness, we have been we have been sanctified, we have been redeemed through Christ Jesus. So once we believe on Jesus Christ, the Bible is telling us we now have wisdom we now have righteousness we oh, yes. inherit these things we inherit wisdom we inherit righteousness we inherit sanctification we re inherit redemption let yes. us look at other bible verses to confirm this we wrote some of these scriptures down so that we can really look into it yeah. wisdom righteousness sanctification and redemption some of scriptures tell us more about this oh yeah colossians 2 3 talks about in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. That is certain. So the Bible now says in Colossians 2 3, yeah. that in him, that's in Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom oh, yes. and knowledge. Mm. Mm. In him are hid all the treasures of of wisdom and, and knowledge oh yes so if we want to get treasures of wisdom and knowledge we have already inherited it oh yes but we still have to do our due diligence by studying the world studying the words of christ especially oh yes and digging into that word mm. so that we can get the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. They're already there. Oh, yeah. But to walk in them, we need to spend time in the word. Mm. We need to spend mm. time alone mm. with God, yes. even through his spirit. Oh, yes. For us to be able to dig into those things so that mm. we don't just stay on the surface of the word of God and say, oh, we have got everything. No, we still have to go further. We have to press in mm. to be able to receive that wisdom to receive that treasure because it's just like a treasure mm. even ordinarily when we see that there is a place okay there is treasure in a particular place oh, what yes. do we do we don't just go there and just try and scrape the surface and say the treasure mm. will manifest mm. we still have to do something we have to dig deep mm. into that ground in order to bring the treasure out and until we see that the word of God is like treasure, mm. we will not dig. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's only when we know that this is treasure, that the word of God is treasure. He's in Christ. 
is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge mm. until we see it from the from the perspective of god mm. because that's god telling us that in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom mm. and knowledge mm. knowledge mm. is not talking about the treasures of silver and gold mm. it's not talking about the treasure of money it's not talking about um, cars and mansions, mm. but it's talking about the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Because once we get the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, all other things will also come. Mm. 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 We have to make wisdom our kinsmen. <laughs> kinsmen mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinsmen, yes. yeah. Embrace her, embrace wisdom. Mm. Don't let her go. That's what the pro Proverbs tells us. Yeah, yeah. And the wisdom will now bring some things, mm, mm. some other treasures out because we have gone for the right treasure mm. that is hidden in Christ. Mm, mm. Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God and the power of God, that's who we need to seek by going through his word, studying, going in depth, mm, mm. pressing to the word. Mm. And it takes time. Yes digging for a treasure takes time so which means you have to exchange your time for that wisdom for that mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. and as long as you can do without it you won't pay the price mm. and the price to be paid for that wisdom and for that knowledge is time which means even if you don't have money mm -hmm. you have time yes every one of us has time yes 24 hours for each of us. So which means if you can exchange your time for that wisdom and for that knowledge, you'll get it. Yes. So in him is hid. Oh. And as you have said, the wisdom and knowledge, they are not, they are not on the surface. And it's and it's not for those who cannot dig. Mm. The wisdom and knowledge of Christ are for those who can dig. And thank God. The grace for dig is there for I mean to dig is, is there for us. Perseverance. Yeah, you persevere, you keep on digging until you get there. Mm. You keep on digging. You keep on digging until you get there. Mm. You know, initially, when you're digging, you know, into the scriptures, you know, it, it may seem as if you don't understand it. Mm. But keep on digging until it opens up. Mm. That's a point you get to whereby God's word opens up unto you. Say, yes. wow, yes. I can understand that subject. For example, there are wisdom concerning prayers, mm. wisdom concerning giving, mm. wisdom concerning our health. All these things are hid in Christ. Wisdom concerning how to relate with God, yeah. they are hid in Christ. So mm. let's exchange time and keep on digging. Yes. Yeah. So it's spending time really is not by going to spend money. Mm. Although you can spend money as in maybe investing your money in getting knowledge, getting books okay. and things that can educate you. Yeah. But primarily, personally, we need to spend time in the world for ourselves. Mm. It's not carrying about a second hand information, but mm. first hand information. Oh, yes. So we are saying that we have inherited it, but we need to walk in it. That's why we brought that up. Because if we have already inherited it, uh, why do we need to just say that we still need to do something? Mm. We need to do something because it's when you inherit something, you don't just, okay, somebody says that we are, um, somebody has inherited um, five billion pounds now. Yeah, yeah. And yet he's walking around as a pauper. What does that tell us? <laughs> as a poor man. A as poor a man. poor man. Mm. What does that tell us? That the, per the person is not walking in his or her inheritance. Mm. Mm. So we need to walk in our inheritance. What has already been brought, bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus, by him sacrificing himself for us. Oh, yes. Because we are also told that if God could sacrifice his son mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for us freely, wow. how we did not also with him also freely give us all, all things, things. All things. All, all things. things. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to walk in these things. And first of all, we need to know what we have inherited, mm -hmm. inherited oh, yes. in order to walk in those things. Mm -hmm. 
So we're just giving some scriptures concerning sanctification. The first um, scripture that we brought out was 1 Corinthians 1.30. Mm -hmm. And since it mentions that Jesus Christ was made unto us wisdom, sanctification, righteousness, redemption, um, yeah, 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 redemption, yeah. Redemption. Yeah. Then that means that we should also bring other scriptures to match up with wisdom, sanctification, righteousness, redemption. Oh, yeah. That's why we are bringing some of those scriptures here. Hmm. So we have Romans 3, yeah. 22. Hmm. Talks about righteousness that is true faith in Christ, true belief in Christ. Hmm. We have righteousness, not something that we have worked for. We have inherited righteousness. Romans 3, 22. Mm. Yeah. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So here we are being told, let's read other scriptures, faith in Christ, Romans 5.1 talks about, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Therefore being made righteous, we can say being made righteous mm. because justified also is righteousness. Therefore being justified by faith, being made righteous by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. It's true faith. We also have Romans 8.30. Romans 8.30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified it's not that he's going to justify us he's already justified us and that he in has christ. already made us righteous mm. in christ we inherited the righteousness of christ oh yes that's what we inherited if we look at romans okay righteousness okay Romans 3, 21 to 31 talks yeah. about redemption, yeah. righteousness yeah. and redemption. Yeah. We have inherited this in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 21 to 31. Mm. Okay. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. But there's no difference. 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is redemption there. Mm -hmm. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that is forgiveness, forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him who believes in Jesus where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, conclude we that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is God, seeing it is one God who shall justify the crucifixion. Uh, the crucifixion by faith. Mm -hmm. That's what Justify the circumcision. Okay, sorry. I justify the circumcision by faith and circumcision through faith. The okay. way that make void the law. 
through faith. God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Okay. What is the law that we are establishing? The law of faith, faith. not mm -hmm. the law of Moses. It's the law of faith that is being established here because we have a mention of that in 27. That is not by works or it's not by the law that we are justified or we are made righteous, but it's by, and it's not by works of the law either, or any works of righteousness that we can say that we have done. Mm. No, but by the law of faith. So we are made righteous by the law of faith. Oh, yes. So whether people are circumcised or uncircumcised, it does not matter. What matters is that we have believed in Jesus Christ. That's the law of faith. So there is no difference between male or female. There is no difference between Jew or Gentile. Everybody has been made one mm. through belief in Jesus Christ. That's the law of faith that has been established. The mm. law of faith, true faith. We have received redemption. Through faith, we have received righteousness. Through faith, we have received sanctification, being set apart, being made holy. Through faith, we have received wisdom. Hmm. Through faith, we have received redemption. Oh, yes. Other scriptures also, 1 Peter 1, 18 to 23. Yeah, that's an important scripture. Hmm. They, are not, they are not the things that we have worked for. We inherited them. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, you are rich in those things hmm. <laughs> because they are your inheritance. Hmm. Mm. We got them free of charge. Somebody paid for it, or he paid for them. Mm. Okay. First Peter one eighteen to twenty one. Yeah, yes, eighteen please. to twenty three. First Peter one eighteen to twenty three. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation or vain conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which lives and abides forever. Mm -hmm. That is there. Then we also have First Peter one verse two. First Peter one verse two. Mm -hmm. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Mm. So here we can even see that through the blood of Jesus and sanctification of the Spirit we have been set apart. The Spirit has his own part also. Oh yes. The sanctification set apart also is established through the Holy Spirit mm. that comes upon us. He's the one that even does the work so that we believe in oh, the yes. first place. Oh yes. He's the Spirit of faith. So we can talk about that. Then there's another one, sanctification, Acts 26, 15 and 18. Mm. That talks about the sanctification of the Spirit. So Acts 26, the Lord was talking to Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul mm -hmm. here. Acts 26. Okay. 15 says, and I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. Verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. That was, you know, the, the Lord giving Paul an assignment. Mm. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins 
an inheritance among them who are sanctified mm -hmm. by faith that is in me. Mm -hmm. So belief in Christ is what causes us to be sanctified, to be set aside, to be set apart for the service of God. There are other scriptures that people can go and read. I don't think we are going to be reading them that talks about the blood of Jesus that was shed. His blood, his body was offered as a sacrifice, as a lamb. We've already read that. But other things that cause us to be separated, to be set apart for the work of God. We have Hebrews 10 verse 10. We have Hebrews 9, 12 and 20. We also have Hebrews 10, 5, 12, 14 and 20. Yeah. We also have Hebrews 9, 12, 20, 26 and 28. Yeah. Because we know that these things are the ones that set us apart. He was his blood was shed. That sets us apart. We have the blood. That sets us apart. Oh, yes. Makes us holy. Cleanses us from all our righteousness. Mm. We know that having the Spirit of God also sets us apart. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So there is sanctification of the Spirit. Because we are His sons, the Bible tells us that He sent His Spirit mm. into our hearts, the Spirit of His Son into our heart, crying, Abba, Father, because we have been set apart. If we look at First Peter 1, 2, have we read that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. People can go and read... Okay, Acts 1, 8 also, mm -hmm. we have been set apart because we know that the Bible say that, uh, says that Jesus Christ told his disciples that they should tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. Oh, yes. And we know that how God, <laughs> I'm going to read Jesus. <laughs> you receive power. Uh, okay. That they will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon them and oh, they yes. will, shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of oh, the yeah. earth. Oh, yes. So that is even a setting apart. When the Spirit of God is in you, that means that you have been set apart. Oh, yes. Because not everybody has the Spirit of God on the inside. We can say people have the Spirit of God on the outside. This is what happened to the disciples. The disciples, Jesus Christ told them that the Spirit of God the comforter he will, he will send because the spirit is with them now, with them, but shall be in them. Oh, yes. After he has left. And apart from that, the Bible even tells us that Joel prophesied concerning mm. this time. Oh, yes. That his spirit will be shed abroad on all flesh. Oh, yes. The Bible doesn't say that it will be shed on only believers. Mm. upon all flesh oh yes oh yes so the holy spirit even is around even people that don't believe so mm. that they can come to believe oh yes oh yes that's why all flesh the bible doesn't say only those that believe all flesh is around everybody even before we became born again oh yes the holy spirit was working it out mm -hmm. in us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we can become born again he was around <laughs> only that he was not on the inside of us. Mm. It was when we became born again that he now came to reside mm. on the inside of us as a believer and set us apart, set us apart mm. so that we could do the work, the service that he has called us onto. Oh, yes. Then we know that Jesus, the truth, he himself was even sanctified and sent to do the service mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we look at John 10, 36, yeah. tells he was, us he was sanctified. That he was, even Jesus Christ himself was sanctified. He was made holy. Not that he was dirty before, but he was made holy. <laughs> he was, was set apart oh, yes. for the service of God, of the service of the Father. John 10, 36 tells us that. Mm. Say you of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme because I said I am the son of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we are able to see that God himself sanctified his son, sent him into the world, oh, yes. set him apart to come into the world to do a service for him. Even as he was sent, we were also sent. Mm -hmm. But let's 
put some more scriptures there. First John 3, 8. Mm. He was sent to do the service of God on mm. earth. He mm. was set apart for this service. Mm. Acts, mm. Uh, no. First John 3, 8. Mm. First John 3, 8. Yeah, it says, he that commits sin is of the devil. Mm. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. So Jesus Christ was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So were those works destroyed? <laughs> That's a question that we mm -hmm. all need to ask mm -hmm. ourselves. Because mm -hmm. we believe that if he hadn't finished, he wouldn't have got, he wouldn't have said, I'm finished. Mm -hmm. It is finished. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't say, it is finished. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So he came to destroy the works of the devil. What does that mean exactly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that he came to destroy the effect that the devil had over mankind mm. was broken when he came into the world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Why well, we don't believe this, we'll just keep on running here and there, helter skelter, mm -hmm. all over the place. When Colossians even tells us that all the ordinances, that were written against us, everything that was contrary to us, Jesus Christ took them out of the way and nailed them onto the cross mm, mm. and made an open show oh, yes. of the principalities over the nations, mm. the powers that are over systems of the world. He made an open show of them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So he was made manifest. So upon that that he has done. The work that Christ has done is what we are supposed to be basing our lives on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And he took us now to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. wow far above wow. principalities <laughs> and powers. Mm. Far above rulers of darkness of this world. Mm. The secret societies and whatever. Mm, mm, over mm. the witches and wizards. Mm, demonic forces. He puts us okay. above them. Oh, yes. So in the hierarchy now is that we are seated in heavenly places in Hallelujah. Christ Jesus. Yeah. So we are supposed <laughs> to be operating, operating from that level. Oh, yes. From that level of authority mm. that we are mm. seated in Christ up there. And even through that, also, we have the use of his name. Mm. That the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Oh, yes. Of things in heaven, things in earth and under the earth. That they have to res respond to that name. Oh, yes. That name that saved us is the same name that we'll use against the enemy. Mm. Mm. Is what we are supposed to use mm. Mm. against the enemy. Mm. So it means we have to enforce our authority. Yes. We enforce our position yes. in Christ. Yes. If the enemy brings destruction, mm. or what can destroy? Say, no, we are above you. Yes. So you are under our feet. In yes. the name of Jesus, this destruction must not manifest or must not continue. Yes. We enforce who we are. Yes. <laughs> if we don't enforce that, the, I mean, the devil can be having a free day. Yes, using uh, even all the works, uh, all the armor that God has given unto us. That is what we are supposed to use. Mm, mm. If we are not standing with the breastplate of righteousness, mm. then we are in for it. Mm. We are submitting ourselves to something else. Mm, mm. If we don't stand with our with, with the belt of truth. Mm, mm. The shield of faith mm, 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 mm. to quench all the fairy dust of the enemy. Mm. If we are not praying in the spirit, which is also warfare. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So what do we do? He has already given us everything that we need oh, to yes. succeed. Oh, yes. So stand firm. Mm. So he came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came to destroy. And also, when we talk about Jesus Christ being set apart, sent to do the service of God, we also know that Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power 
who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Oh, yes. He was set apart to do this. Mm. So God doesn't just want us to believe and sit down <laughs> on our blessed assurance, as somebody <laughs> says, ah. and just sit down and say, now we are just waiting to go to heaven. Mm. Mm. Even Jesus Christ in that prayer of John 17, he said he's not praying that they should be taken to heaven. <laughs> That's that means that they still had something to do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That oh, yes. was sanctifying them, setting them as, apart to do a work. They had not finished their assignment. So they should not be taken out of the world. Hmm. But they should be kept from the evil, just as we too. He also prayed that we should be kept from the evil, be secure from mm. that evil and if christ said they should not be taken out of the world that means no devil can take them out of the world yes before they achieve what he has sent them to do yes that's what for somebody mm. Mm. you're watching this program and maybe you're afraid hey they're afraid of death meanwhile you haven't finished your assignment mm. you're not permitted to leave the world yeah I have goodness for you. Whatever the, doc you know, the doctor has said concerning your health, you are not permitted to leave the world yet. Why? Because you haven't finished your assignment. Yes. So be strong that you are not living now. As, as so many Christians, you know, we are so we are so greedy. You want we want to just go to heaven. Or I will say the word, I will use the word selfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Selfishness. Uh, you know, oh heaven is my home. I want to go to heaven. Please stay here because there are more works to do here. Mm. <laughs> there are things to achieve here. Yes. So stay here and make this world better, a better place. Help mm. in those who are in need. Close the naked. You know, feed the hungry. Mm. You know, those who are thirsty, give them, you know, give them things to drink like water. So don't be selfish. I know heaven is good. Even here on earth, already in Christ, we are in heaven in Christ. Mm. And even when we leave this world, we, we, will reach, we will enter heaven eventually. But let us do something here before we go. Mm. Let's take, you know, let us put the devil to shame in everything he's doing. Let's put him, to, you know, where he belongs in creation. Let us help people to escape the power of darkness and to come into the light. Yes. But, you know, in our lifetime. Yes. Turning people from darkness yeah. to the power of darkness oh, yes. to light. Mm. So, so that is Jesus. We also, we have been set apart, oh, yes. made holy for the service of God mm. in and outside the church building. We have been made holy, set apart, set apart for the work, for the ministry, wherever God has sent us to. Oh, yes. Because he has made us the mm. light of the world. Oh, yes. He didn't say that we are not the light of the world. That means that we are supposed to bring light. We are supposed to bring knowledge to the world that he has called us to. We have oh, said yes. this before a few times on Let's Talk, that everybody has been given a world that we are supposed to go to and shine the light there. That means there is darkness in that particular place. Mm, mm. That's why the light is needed. The light is the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. What he came to do. That light needs to show, to shine there. Oh, yes. Maybe it is the world of um, accounting, accountancy. Maybe it's the world of entrepreneurship. Whether it's the world of um, teaching, hmm. education, the world of um, the doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Medical world. Medical world. Yeah. Maybe the world of entertainment. Uh, entertainment. Yeah. World of sports. World of sports. Mm. World of politics. Yes. Yeah. World of politics. Where there is darkness, we are supposed to bring the light. The light is supposed to shine there. That's why we are brought to that place. So more, nobody should now come and say, oh, why would you go to the world of politics? That place is very dirty. 
That politics uh, is a dirty game. <laughs> we are supposed to go there and bring light there. And play the game, all right? Uh, <laughs> we should go and play the game, all right? <laughs> yes, that this is not the way to go about it. Mm. Let's bring the kingdom principles here. So that's how it should be. And we should not be scared that, oh, if we go into politics now, I'm just taking this by an example now. Oh, if we go into politics now, will become dark or the light will go. Mm, which one is supposed to overcome which one? <laughs> is it darkness that is supposed to overcome light or light is supposed to overcome darkness? Mm, mm, mm. Or what kind of light do we have? Mm, mm. Is it the, the light that is not as steady as it should be? That's why mm. we don't have the enough knowledge. That's why the darkness will now overcome. Mm, mm. Let's continue. So we have been set apart for the service of God also, even as Christ was set apart to do service in the world. And he finished and he left. We too are also set apart to do this. Oh, yes. So we have First Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. First Corinthians sixteen, First um, Corinthians three sixteen to seventeen says, "Know you not hmm. that you are the temple of God, and oh, that yes. the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are." Ah. Mm -hmm. For the temple of God is holy. Mm -hmm. For the temple of God is holy. Mm -hmm. The temple of God is holy. Mm -hmm. The temple of God is set apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every one of us that have the spirit of God on the inside, we are the temple of God and we are being set apart. We are being made holy. Before, uh, before the Holy Ghost even came in, he had made us holy. Mm. Oh, yes. So that he could reside there. Mm. Mm. So he's the one that comes in and separates us, makes us holy. Mm. Not mm. the other way around. That we have to try and get our act together. We have to try and make ourselves holy <laughs> oh, yes. so that Christ will come in. Mm. Once we are believed, mm. 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 he comes and makes us holy. Mm. 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 It is part of our inheritance. Oh, yes. And the Holy Spirit lives in a holy place. Yes. And if he lives in us, since he lives in us, we are holy. We are holy because we yes. believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. You know, the day I saw the scriptures, I mean that scripture that says, ah, uh -uh. you mean because I'm God's temple, I'm holy. Mm. That's changed the way I look at things. Mm. In Christ, I'm, you know, I'm holy already. That is why the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you know, could come and mm. reside in me. Yes. So if you are a temple, even if you are believing in Jesus Christ, you are holy already. That's why yes. the Holy Ghost came to reside on the inside of you. Yes. That is profound. That's profound. And that's why he said that whoever destroys that temple, defiles that temple, because he has already made that temple holy, he has already made us holy. So it is something that is holy that can be defiled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was defiled already, you can't say that you want to make, defile it. Again. <laughs> defilement is defilement. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm making it dirty. Again. But he has already made it clean. He has already made it holy. He has already set our temple apart mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, for the service of God. Acts. Um, no. Why am I saying Acts? <laughs> <laughs> We have in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Yes. So we have the Holy Spirit. We should note that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in our temple, holy. So because he is holy, he has made us holy. The temple of 
God mm. is holy. Because mm. when the Bible is saying that, what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Ghost. Mm. The Holy Ghost doesn't reside in a dirty place. Mm. Mm. So he made us holy mm. Mm. and he came to reside in us. Mm. Mm. And then he tells us that we are bought with a price. So that means that we have already been separated again mm, mm. by the blood of Jesus that was shed. Mm. So now, therefore, glorify God in our body, in our spirit, which are God's, that mm. belongs to God. Mm. Then we also have, okay, and um, some examples. We can put two examples here of the Holy Spirit's work. Yeah, or I mean, setting yeah, apart. us mm. apart mm. for service. We have Acts 13, 1 to 3. Mm. <laughs> it's interesting. Yes, yes. Set us apart. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Set us apart. Everybody has been set apart for one service or the other. Now they are in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manai, who has been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Yeah. So there we can even see an example of being set apart for a particular service. It's not that they were not holy. They were already holy. But he now had to set them apart. They've already been doing some work. But now there was another work that they were supposed to do. So they were set apart for the service of God in a new in a new field, hmm. we will say, in a new field. So we also have Jeremiah 1.5 hmm. <laughs> that talks about being set apart, that the prophet Jeremiah was set apart hmm. before he was formed in his mother's womb. Hmm. He had been set apart, he had been sanctified for the work of being a prophet. Oh, yes. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Got it, yeah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Mm. So here we are able to see that it was set apart to be a prophet. That's in the Old Testament, he was set apart to be a prophet. We know that in Acts 13 that we have already read also, there were people that have been set apart already to be prophets, to be teachers. Mm -hmm. We can see that was the work of the Holy Spirit. And we know that Saul and Barnabas were there. And through someone there, they prophesied that the Holy Ghost spoke through somebody that Paul and Barnabas should be separate for the work of the ministry that mm. they were supposed to go and do. So we, if we look at Jeremiah 1, 5, that says that before, before he was formed in his mother's womb, God had already known him. If we look at Romans 8, tells us also that we too have already, we have been foreknown by God mm. and predestinated mm. to be conformed to his son. Mm. So he foreknew us. Oh, yes. Romans 8. Thank you, Lord. Before we were even formed in our mother's womb, he has already known us and ordained us. He has already called us to do a particular work. Okay. And the work, okay, verse 29 okay tells us 29 tells us 29 for whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren 
Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, made righteous, and whom he made righteous or justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. So he also foreknew us that we should do what? He foreknew us so that we too, we can be predestinated to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. So we have been separated to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have been set apart to be like Jesus. No wonder Jesus Christ said that those that believe on me, mm. the works that I did, mm. I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. Mm. John 14 verse 12. <laughs> we are supposed to be like him in service. The only difference is it might be one place or the other, but it's still in the world oh, yes. somewhere. We are supposed to be in one place or the other, and it's the Holy Ghost that can reveal unto us where we are supposed to serve, mm, mm, where mm. our services are needed, mm, mm, mm. where we are supposed to manifest Christ, where we are supposed to bring the light. He said, I am the light of the world. By the time he was going, he said that we are the light of the world. Oh, yes. Can you see that we are like Christ? Mm. So we are supposed to be walking in that. So we are to walk. Let's continue. So we are to walk in that sanctification that we have inherited. Mm. We are supposed to walk in that righteousness that we have inherited. We are supposed to walk in that wisdom that we have inherited. We are supposed to walk in that redemption that we have inherited. Mm. We are supposed to walk in that sanctification that we have inherited. Mm. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Mm. We are to walk in this, what we have set apart, been set apart to do. We are supposed to walk in them. We are supposed to abstain from the works of the flesh. Second Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Okay, okay. So okay. Yeah. yeah, you can read, please. Yeah. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. For in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, that is separated and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. Mm. So we are supposed to be vessels unto honor. We have been set apart, so we are supposed to be vessels of honor, prepared unto every good work. Let's look. Okay, we don't need to read this, do we? Galatians yeah. 5, 19 to 21. Mm, those are the flesh. Those are the works of the flesh. Mm. We are set apart from those things. We are not supposed to be involving ourselves in the works of the flesh. And we know that the works of the flesh are manifest. Mm, which are these? Which are these? Let's, we, let's, let's, please, let's, it's so important. You know, you know, can't just gloss over that. <laughs> over such an important scripture. Uh, Galatians 5. Mm. Mm. Of the flesh are manifest, which are the following mm, from 19. Yeah, now the words of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strife, jealousy, wrath, selfishness, division, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. And such like of which I tell you before, and as I've also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
So we have been set apart from the works of the flesh to do the works of the Spirit, which we can see in 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no, no law. law. That's what we have been set apart to do. So we are set apart to use our body parts or our members for righteousness, to do right things. If we look at Romans 12, 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, mm -hmm. our bodies have been set apart. We are vessels in God's hands that have been set apart to do that which is right. Yeah. Okay. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And may not conform to this world, may be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. So our bodies are supposed to be set apart, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. We are supposed to walk in that inheritance that we have. That's why we have that. We have Romans 6, 16 to 19. Romans 6, 16 to 19. We can also talk about even our minds too needs to be set apart. Mm. That is walking in the inheritance because our mind was not saved when we were born again. We still had the same mindset. It was our spirit that was born again. Oh, yes. We now have to walk in that, walk in setting our, our minds also apart. Oh, yes. Not letting it be conformed to the world, to the world systems, to the way the world thinks and, and things like that. We are supposed to set it apart to think mm. on things that are true, holy, mm. just, pure, lovely, mm. or good report. If there be any virtue or any praise, think on these things. Mm. Mm. Should we, Romans 6, okay. 16 to 19. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, the servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness, but God be thanked that you we are the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Mm. I speak after the manner of men because of the weakness of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. So here we're able to see that our members, the members, that means every part of our body, every body part. Mm, the hands, the legs, the eyes, the mouth. To be set apart. That mm. means walking in it now is to be set apart, to do what is right to walk in obedience of what is right, to do the right things. Mm. For example, we have members of our body like our tongue. Mm. It should be used to speak the truth. Mm. Mm. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4, let's look at Ephesians 4. So, Ephesians 4, 22 to 25, mm. that we are supposed to speak the truth, not speak falsehood, not speak lies. Our tongue is set apart to speak the truth. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians. Mm. The part of our body needed. For righteousness. Yeah. Mm. Ephesians 4, 22 to 25. That you put off concerning the former way of life, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that is your soul, mm. and that you put on the new man, 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of, for we are members one of another. Mm -hmm. So here we are told that even as members in the body of Christ, mm. that we are supposed to tell the truth, speak the truth to our neighbors. Even those that are not even members of the body of Christ, we are mm. supposed to speak the truth, not speak lies, mm. Mm. not speak deceit, say what we mean. So we are supposed to speak the truth. So our tongues have been set a part to speak the truth. Oh yes. The Bible also says speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4:15. Okay, sorry. Let's let's add more to um Ephesians 4, 22 to 25 that says speak the truth to your neighbor. Yeah. So even in the body of Christ, we are supposed to be speaking the truth. Hmm. We should be known for speaking the truth, oh, yes. not hiding the truth. Anybody that is hiding the truth is not of God, is hmm. not speaking, is not from God. Oh, yes. Because when one covers the truth, mm, mm. that means one is on the side of darkness, not on the side of light. Oh, yes. So we are supposed to speak the truth to our neighbors, like in the body of Christ. Now, if we know that something is wrong, Mm. We are supposed to speak that truth mm. out. Mm, mm, mm. We are supposed to speak that truth out. Somebody gave an analogy that, okay, for example, your eyes are seeing that there is a pit or something like that yeah. in front. Won't it send a message mm. to the foot? Mm. You better try that, see if it is the ground or it's not the ground mm, mm. maybe somebody has spread a trap there mm. it will warn it will tell the foot mm. that be careful of that place it won't just say okay i can see that this is going to i can see this truth mm. and i'll leave i won't tell i won't tell the foot mm. Mm. i'll leave the foot to go and go in and fall into it mm. so who is fooling who oh yes or who is going to be in trouble oh yes so we need to be somebody that tells the truth. We should be known for the truth. Jesus Christ, when he came into the world, he was known for speaking the truth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And if we say that we believe on him, we too should be known for telling the truth. Oh, yes. Not that people will say, oh, don't, don't mind that person. That person is a liar. Even Jesus Christ, when he came and he spoke the truth, definitely not everybody is going to agree with that truth. Mm. He said, you go about um, John 8, 40. Mm. You are go about to kill me because I, talk, I told you the about truth. the truth. The truth, yeah. I told you the truth you are going about. So not everybody is going to be a friend of the truth. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't say it. Jesus Christ, when he came, he spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, those the, um, Pharisees and Sadducees, that they were hypocrites. <laughs> he was speaking the truth. He mm. wasn't lying. Mm. He said they were vipers. Mm. He called them different kinds of things mm. because that's who they were. That was the truth about them. Mm. Mm. Is it for them to just continue in it? No. 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 For them to change. Mm. It's the truth that will bring freedom oh, yes. for those that love the truth. Mm. 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 It was so that they could see who they had become, that they were hypocrites, mm. that they were people that would just be acting <laughs> mm. what was not true. So that's Jesus. So if we say that we are followers of Christ, mm. we should also be able to also say that this is the truth about this matter. This is the truth. We don't cover it up or we don't uh, speak lies or falsehood or um, whatever, how would we put it? Mm. Anything mm. that is contrary to the truth, we shouldn't even be dabbling into it. And speaking I mean, speaking the truth shows that you love that person. Yes. Jesus Christ spoke the truth to the Pharisees because he mm. loved them. Mm. Mm. And thank God, three of them in his lifetime yes. believed. Yes. They changed their ways. Yes. 
So if you don't tell somebody the truth, it means I mean that person you actually hate that person. Yes. But when I mean I'm talking, I'm talking to somebody the truth, you are sure that you know. Mr. Uh, Mr. A or Mrs. Uh, Mrs. B, I love it. You know, and that's why I'm telling you mm. the truth. Mm. So that's just interesting that the Lord loved them. Yes. That's why he and spoke <laughs> to them the truth, which they hated anyway. Yes, they didn't love it. But those that were able to go and think about it, mm -hmm. we know that Nicodemus yeah, was, an example. Yeah. was an example. And we know that even after Christ died, we know that some Pharisees became believers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe it just took longer for some people to believe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because they all heard it. Ah, ah did you hear? He said that we are hypocrites. <laughs> did you hear? He said we are, he said we are devourers. <laughs> did you hear? Mm. I said that we are doing like this. We are doing that. We mm. are we are uh, doing tight of these um, little things, mm. and yet we are not. We are ignoring the weightier matters of the law. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Mm. So he came to tell them the truth. They didn't love the truth at that time, but through that truth that he spoke to them, mm. sooner or later, some people became believers. So the truth is like sowing a seed. Yes. Uh -huh. when, you, when you teach the truth, when you speak the truth, even if the hearers will not accept what you are saying, Mm. But for saying it, you have sown a seed. Mm. And let's leave it to you know to God Himself, who mm. is the truth. Mm. He will make sure that such a word germinates in the hearts of the hearers. Yes. But, yeah. but if you don't say it, mm. you are depriving them of the chance mm. of mm. believing something different. Yes. From what they are holding on to. Yes. Which is a lie. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So sowing a seed, when you speak the truth, whether the hearers like it or not, you have sown a seed. Yes. Mm, they have sown a seed. Mm. The Bible also tells us that we must speak the truth in love. Mm. Ephesians 4, 15 yeah. tells us. Mm. And why are we supposed to speak the truth in love? Mm. But, speaking, yeah, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things. That's unto Christ. Mm. Who is the head? Even Christ. Yes. So we are supposed to speak the truth in love. So does that mean that we shouldn't speak the truth? No. It just means speak the truth in God. Mm. God is love. And love is God. Oh, yes. So speak the truth in God. What did God say about that person? Mm. Mm. So say it in that manner. Mm. 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 It might be harsh. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes. It might be gentle. Mm. So we can't put a, we can't put a, what will we say? Put a stamp on it and say that everybody, when you even want to say the truth, that you have to say it gently. Mm -hmm. it, be might, gentle. It, mm. it might be harsh. <laughs> you can imagine when he was saying hypocrite. Do you think he was saying it gently? Mm, or in a smiley way. Uh, he wasn't. <laughs> in a smiley way. Was mm. harsh. Mm. 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 So say it the way God wants you to say it. That's, it. That's, That's the worst. speaking the truth in love. Mm, speak mm. it the way God wants you to speak it. Mm. And what will happen when we speak it the way God wants us to speak it? Mm. Growth will happen. Oh, yes. So we must speak the truth in love to others. And we should also speak the truth in love to ourselves. That's that's interesting. That's, we that's must speak the truth or mm. the truth to ourselves. If we know that we are lazy, for example, we shall speak the truth that this laziness is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> Look at this, the slothful man. What does the Bible say about the slothful man mm. that will end up begging? Mm. You speak the truth to yourself. Mm. Mm. That mm. Look at the, even the ant. They said the slogan should go to the ant and learn. Oh, yes. And learn that the ant will be the teacher. That he doesn't have any guide, overseer, any leader. And yet it knows that he needs to go out and work in the summer to gather in the harvest. It doesn't need anybody to motivate it. It is self-motivated. Oh, yes. So we too must be self-motivated. So these are the kind of truths that we need to speak to ourselves. If we know that there is something that we are doing that is not right, self-assessment, mm. self-examination, tell ourselves, that, okay, this is the truth, mm. that mm. I know I love doing this and this and this is not going to pay me. Mm. Mm. 
look at the vices. Mm. We are supposed to look at the vices that we have. Mm. Mm. Because only our spirit was saved, not our, our soul. Mm. Our soul is still in education. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Being educated. Mm. That's why the Bible says that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Oh, yes. So because of that, we need to, because by the time we are able to do this self-examination, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speak the truth to ourselves, growth will happen. Yes, yes. Just as in the body of Christ too, when we are able to speak the truth concerning any member of the body that is messing up, mm -hmm. growth will now happen. Everybody will grow. Oh, yes. But we should start from ourselves. We don't need to wait for somebody else. <laughs> Mm. We, we can speak the truth quite all right but it should start with us mm. we are a member of the body too mm. so we ourselves should speak truth to ourselves oh yes too, oh yes and sort ourselves out mm. too mm. that doesn't mean that we will not speak the truth concerning anything else because we have to sort ourselves out first mm. Mm. because mm. some believe that you have to sort there's nobody that is not doing that doesn't need work Oh yes. oh, yes. So we can't wait until we are perfect mm -hmm. before we say we want to talk about anything or anybody else. Especially major issues yes. that affect the whole body. Yes. You cannot wait. We have to point it out, especially, for, for example, those who are enslaving the body of Christ today. Mm. We must not say, well, until, you know, we are all perfect. That's why we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Because speaking about it even leads the whole body to perfection. Yes. So... And slaving, any you know, a member of the body of Christ is wrong. So we say it. That's the truth. Yes. Nobody has been called to dominate. No, 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 no. Even no. in Genesis, we are told there that Adam and Eve were to go and dominate things. They weren't told to. Adam was not told to go and rule over the wife until the fall. Oh, yes. But in Christ Jesus, we have all been made one. Oh, Nobody yes. is supposed to rule. Because mm. you are the husband, you don't rule over your wife. You don't dominate your wife. You don't do that. Both of you are supposed to dominate the earth together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you should honor each other. Yes. Mm. <laughs> no. So, so men, men, men should wake up. <laughs> men, wake up. You have to honor your wife. Love, love her. And, you know, and wife also honor her husband, yeah. love her husband. Yes. So we are talking about speaking the truth in love, the way God wants us to speak it. It can be gentle, it can be harsh. Uh -huh. Now, you know, we read Ephesians 4. The Bible says, you know, we can grow in Christ. Yes. Truth yes. brings growth. Mm. If you see a system or a church organization, or a church organization we are the idols feeding them with lies. It is, you know, one thing is common. Many of them, you know, they will remain as babes. Mm -hmm. They won't grow. They won't grow in grace. Mm -hmm. They won't grow in knowledge. When they talk, mm -hmm. you know, the, I mean, the way they talk will not show any maturity. Why? Because they are being fed lies. And many, I mean, of this book, I mean, of this people that are being fed lies, they have been assured that they have growth in the Lord, that they are matured. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you are telling a baby that is matured, that's a recipe for disaster. So you baby, you know what? You are you are you, know, you are now you are now matured. You are giving that baby a problem because he is not up to what you are asking. You know, telling him that he or she is mm -hmm. a two year old. You are saying, well, you are matured as as a person who is thirty years old. Mm -hmm. That child can go and do the wrong thing mm -hmm. and cause danger to his or her life. Mm -hmm. So any system where they are pushing the truth, you will see growth mm -hmm. in their midst. Mm -hmm. And when they are pushing lies. You will see lack of growth. Mm. You will see, you know, lack of progress, mm. especially in spiritual matters, in mm. spiritual understanding, in spiritual things. <laughs> so the truth enhances growth. Yes. Colossians three nine. We are talking about a member. Just the tongue here has been set apart to speak the truth. Mm. Colossians three nine. says, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, okay. and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Hmm. 
where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Yeah. So we are supposed to put this on, to walk in this, because our soul, the putting on, is talking about our soul. It's not talking about our spirit. It's talking about our soul. We need to put these things on. Take off some things and put on some things. So we are supposed to take off lying. Lying. We are supposed to take off lying. And there is no way we can say that lying. Lying is lying. Whether it is half truth, whether it is non-truth, mm. whether it is um, what kind of truth, a white lie, Mm. Whether it is red lie or brown, whatever, brown lies, it still lies. It mm. still lies, and the Bible says that all liars. Mm. So, the category, no matter the something, all of them, the, that category of liars, different types of liars, mm. will also end in the lake of fire. That's mm. what the Bible says. So, Colossians three nine, we have read that we are not to lie to one another, having put off the old man and his deeds. We are to put on the new man onto our souls. Then we have Proverbs 7, no, Proverbs 8, 7. Proverbs 8, 7. Proverbs 8, 7. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Mm -hmm. So our mouth should be speaking truth. Wickedness should be something that is an abomination to us. We have been set apart to speak the truth, not to speak lies. That is an abomination even before God our creator. God is not a liar. It's the devil that we know that is a liar. And he was the, and he's the father of lies. Oh yes. The Bible says that he even speak. One version says that he speaks his native <laughs> language, mm. which is lies. Mm. Proverbs twelve seventeen. We should be like our father that speaks the truth. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, spoke the truth, and we are sons and daughters also should also speak the truth. Mm. 12 verse 7, 17. He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness, mm. but a false witness deceit. Mm. So our tongue is supposed to speak forth truth. Truth. So also, we are still talking about our tongue. There is a little member, according to James. Yeah. We are still talking about the tongue. We are supposed to bless with our tongue. Our tongue has been set apart for blessing and not cursing people. Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that is very easy. Been set apart. To understand, yeah. Forty-three says, "You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the son of your Father who is in heaven." For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the tax collectors so? Be you therefore perfect? even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. So Jesus Christ was speaking the truth here, that you have heard it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and mm. hate thy enemies. In our time, this is what we are supposed to do. 
because Jesus Christ has already said it. Jesus, the truth has already spoken to us mm. that we should love our enemies. Do what? Bless them that because curse you. us. Mm. Do good. That is our actions, our bodies doing good to them that hate us. I use our mouth even to pray for those that despitefully use and persecute us so that we can be children of our Father in heaven who demonstrates his own love to us in that he causes his son to rise on the evil and even upon the good, even sends rain upon the just as well as the unjust. Mm showing his love towards everybody he doesn't say this one is wicked so i'm not going to allow rain <laughs> because there is that belief also mm -hmm, that yeah. some people will say it's because of sin mm -hmm. that's why there is no rain mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. god didn't say that we know that in the old testament yeah. there are some things that happen yeah. but here we are told mm -hmm. that he causes his son mm -hmm. Because if there is no sun, if there is no light, how will people get food? Mm. If there is no rain, how would people get food? So God, God doesn't discriminate. No. When it comes to making rain available. Yes. Making sun available. Yes. So, so, so people say, ah, uh, it's because uh, the world, you know, uh, the world is full of sin. You know, that's why we have this pandemic. Mm. It, you know, sin is the. Uh, that's true, but but God didn't bring the pandemic. Human beings brought it into existence and thank god god is working on that also mm. that the way it came that's the way it will go in jesus name amen uh -huh. so god 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 doesn't when it comes to his blessings he so much loved the world that he even he even gave his only son so god doesn't discriminate when it comes to blessings and it says he will cause his son to fall upon the wicked and upon the righteous mm. Mm. So, still talking about the tongue that has been set apart, let's look at what James has to say. Mm. James 3, 9 to, we know that about the, we are not going to read it from the beginning, we're just going to read from 9, 9 to 12. Yeah. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, hmm. which are made after the similitude of God. Hmm. Every human being is made in the image of God. Hmm. It's resemblance. Resemble God. They might not resemble in character. Hmm. But everybody, when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Oh, yes. So everybody is created in the image of God. Mm, mm. So by the time a person is cursing another person, maybe their features or anything like that, that means that that person is cursing God. Because mm. he made everyone in his image. We are all human beings, mm. but are created in his image, mm. in his form. Mm. Mm. So James was now saying, out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and curses. Mm. My brethren, these things ought not to, not so to be. Oh, yes. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fix, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Mm. So our tongue is not for cursing. Mm. Our tongue is not for cursing. Some people can say that um, Jesus Christ cursed. What did he curse? <laughs> that's the, that's that's the, the question. Thing. What did he curse? <laughs> He cursed the fig tree. Oh, yes. He didn't even curse human beings mm, mm. that are created after his image. Mm, 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 mm. And some people say, you know, uh, Apostle Paul, he caused uh, the sorcerer. And, and the sorcerer went blind. No. He just, you know, he was inspired by the Holy Ghost to, to speak what will happen to the sorcerer. And you know, he didn't say that, you know, the man should go and die. Oh. He said, he said that the man should be blind for a season. 
you know, you go and learn some lessons. Yes, just as he <laughs> learned some lessons. Uh, I was also who have gone through have gone through similar experience when he got converted, you know, on, on his way, on his way to, to, to Damascus. Mm. You know, he was he was blinded by the light that that he saw. Mm. So he knew what he learned for a season. Mm. So let this sorcerer to go and have a taste. Possibly, he can be converted. Yes, within that season. Yes, because he will have time to think. Oh yes. He so will be limited in his movement, he will just sit in one place and be <laughs> thinking, now what is this that uh, has happened to uh, him? Even imagine before we give our life to Jesus Christ, many mm. of us we have done some terrible things, mm. <laughs> mm. and uh, you know, if people had caused us, if mm. we have been caused by people and we have died, mm. there won't be time for repentance. Mm. Today, we'll be saying that you know, we are born again or we are God's children. No. Mm. Because we have died under a curse mm. placed on us by somebody. Mm. But thank God, some Christians were praying for us that, oh, oh Lord, open the eyes of this of this young man mm. that you can see. Mm. Although we are doing something bad to them, but but you know they were praying for us. And today here we are, we believe in God. So if we had, you know, if they had caused us and we have died, it's possible we wouldn't have been able to even become. God's children. But thank God for those who had the heart of Christ to pray for us. Mm. Those who saw Matthew 5 and they obeyed it. Mm. And they prayed for those who were against them. Mm. And those who were against them got converted eventually. Mm. Look at the case of uh, Stephen. Mm. You know, when he was being stoned to death. Mm. And the person who was there taking care of the clothes of the stoners. Mm. They cared for their clothes more, more than for a human. Yeah, yeah. The Don't person, want any stains. Uh, yeah, the person who was there was young Saul. And Stephen said, Lord, don't count this sin against them. Mm. And while Bible in said, pain. Yeah, while in pain. He prayed for those who were stoning him. And Saul had that prayer. I'm sure that that was one of the things, you know, that was pricking his heart before he eventually goes converted yes it's so hard yeah the account it. was uh, the account was in acts 7 and acts 9 so apostle paul the prayer prayed by stephen that apostle paul hated had influence in the life of apostle paul mm. i think you know we should learn you know from that in the body of christ mm. so many people you see that they go across i mean they cause this they cause this man cause that person cause unbelievers because in those of you know those who have different faiths, the Lord didn't say we should do that. He said we should bless those who are using us, you know, despitefully. Those who do, you know who are doing us evil, we should bless them. And that item was uh, Alexander the Copper Smith. Mm. Did me much evil. May God repay him. Some will say, well, no, look, look at Apostle Paul. He's saying, May God repay him. Mm. But you know, it didn't cost him because even if Apostle Paul didn't speak, yes, what the guy called Alexander the Copper Smith did was like sowing a seed. Oh yes, and he will reap eventually. Oh yes, if you have sown bad things into a person's life, if you have if you have sown an evil, you will also reap evil. Oh yes. So Paul didn't cause him per se. He just said, "What we you know what will happen to him? <laughs> that because he has done much evil, let God repay him, and God has a way of repaying somebody. Yeah. And he didn't say God kill him. Yeah." Mm. <laughs> Uh, uh. Then we also have other scriptures to First Corinthians ten thirty one. Mm, mm. Yeah, okay. yeah. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Mm. No, First Corinthians ten thirty one. Am, am I right? Oh, no. no. <laughs> it's a different one. You are putting. Quite the wrong thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, please. Sorry. Whether death, or okay, okay, you whether eat you eat or okay. drink, sorry about or that. whatsoever you do, do all to the glory mm. of God. Mm. Whether you eat or drink, mm. whatever you are doing, whatever we are doing with any member of our body, mm. Mm. our hands, mm. our legs, whether we are eating, whether mm. we are drinking, we are using our mouth to eat something, we should make sure that it is giving God glory whatever we are drinking excuse me we should make sure that it is giving god glory and whatever we do with any part of our body we should make sure that it is giving glory to god 
That's what the Bible tells us here. And in Colossians 3, 22 to 24. Mm. So whatever we are doing, it should bring glory to God. It should bring praise to God. Um, okay. Yeah. Colossians 3, 22. Servants obey in all things, your masters, according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Mm. So here also we are told that we are supposed to do everything as unto the Lord. Even if we are working for people that don't believe God, mm. we are supposed to work as if we are working for the Lord. Oh, yes. That, that's how we are supposed to work. So it's not something that will say, ah, this is not the work of God. Because it's not done in church, that means it is not the work of God. The Bible is saying that whatsoever we are doing, that we must do it heartily with our whole hearts, not half-heartedly, and saying that, mm, let me, I'm just doing this so that I can get money and go and do one thing or the other. No, everything that we do, we are supposed to be doing it heartily as if we are working for God, and mm. we are working for God, mm. even though we are working for an unbeliever, somebody that doesn't believe in God. Mm. We are supposed to do it not with eye service. Mm. Mm. So which means work is a service. Yes. Uh -huh. Anything you are doing and you are earning money is a service. You are working, you are serving. It's a service. Yes. And it can be anywhere. Oh yes. Then we have first Peter 4, 10 to 11. Talks about speaking again. First Peter. That's mm. Peter 4, 10 and 11. Yeah. Are you reading? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, reading. Yeah, you can read, please, yeah. <laughs> As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm. So even when we are speaking as the oracle of God, God is telling us something, and we are speaking as the mouthpiece of God. We must know how we will speak. We shouldn't speak with um, puffed up, um, how would we put it now? Mm, mm. Being puffed up or anything. But Peter is telling us that we should do it as of the ability that it is grace. Mm. It's not that we work for it, but it is grace. It's the ability of God that that's how we should speak, as of the ability that God has given. Mm. Not that we now went to work for it and now... We are now using that and saying that we receive these things. The Bible says we speak as we have received. So that's how we speak, as of the ability which God gives, which mm. means that it's God that give, gave it, that in all things God will be glorified. glorified. Mm. So everything that we say also must glorify God with our what we say with our mouth and even with our actions mm. because our actions too can speak mm, that's true our actions can speak that's why first samuel 2 the 3 mm. yeah yeah talks about by actions yeah by god actions are weighed by he, by god actions are weighed mm. that we have proverbs 6 13 let's read it proverbs 6 13 Proverbs 6, 
He wins with his eyes. He signals with his feet. He motions with his fingers, or he teaches with his fingers. <laughs> So here we're able to see that even the members of the body too can speak. It's not only when we voice something out, but even everything about our body can speak. The way we move our bodies, the way we talk uh, with our hands, the way we, if we go to, let, let's just say we go to a particular place now, we are teaching people that it's all right to go to that place. Yes, yes. If we take bribe, mm. we take things that are not supposed to be taken with our hands. Mm. We are teaching people that it's all right to take bribe. Mm. It's all right to take money that has been stolen. Mm. That it's all right to do those things. Because mm. mm. we are teaching people with our, our actions. actions. Mm. If we go to a particular place, that's where we like going. Mm. We are teaching people also, and it's not even the place that we are supposed to go. Mm. go to then we are teaching people that it's all right to go there you don't have even if you're a christian you can always go go there mm. Mm. your legs can teach mm. where you go is teaching people mm. that this is right or this is wrong mm. what you eat also can also teach yes apostle Paul said if my eating meat will cause my brother to to offend or mm. to stumble mm. i won't eat meat mm. So what you eat can also teach you, you know, your actions yes. can teach. Yes. Then we have Proverbs 14, 15. Proverbs 14, 15 tells us. The simple believe every word, but the prudent man looks well to his going. The simple believes every word. The simple here is the foolish. The okay. foolish believes every word mm. that a man is speaking. Because if she said this, or because he has said this, then that means it is right. But it is only the wise that will hear what a person is saying and also look at the actions. If the actions are not matching up with what the person has said, then he knows, ah, oh, no, this person is a liar. Mm -hmm. But it is only the foolish that will believe every word that somebody is saying without looking at the actions. The actions should correspond mm -hmm. with what a person is saying. That's why even Jesus Christ said that the Pharisees listen to what they have to say concerning the law but don't do their actions. Mm. Because he could see it. They will say, talk about the law and everything, but they were not doing the law. Mm, 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 mm. In the open, they will talk about the law. Yeah. Talk about mercy, talk about judgment, talk about justice. Mm. But in their closet, they are doing what is contrary to what they are teaching. Mm. And even some, it's not even in the closet. You I can see open. It in the open. <laughs> in the open. Ah. Even in the open, they are doing contrary to mm. what they are saying. Mm. 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 So that's that. Then we have talked briefly on the mind also, that we have to set our mind also apart by spending time in the Word of God so that our minds can be renewed mm. so that our thoughts will begin to have the right thoughts mm. we can have the right thoughts or reasonings we can have the right emotions or feelings we can have the right will mm. Mm. concerning the things of god so that we can bow to the will of the father if we see that what we what we will what we desire with our will is something that is contrary to what god has as his will, then we have to remove that will and put the Father's will. Oh, yes. Then replace it. The law of replacement has to happen concerning everything. So we also want to just talk briefly about, in the Old Testament, we are told that there are vessels that were sanctified, that were set apart for the master's use. Well, some have decided that the vessels that have been set apart to be used for the master's use 
or for God's service should be used contrary to what God has said. Hmm. If we look at Belshazzar, what's yeah, his name? Yeah, now? yeah, 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 that's the name. We hmm. know that the vessels that were dedicated hmm. to the house of God, he took them and he drank in them wine and started worshiping worshiping gods, gods praising the gods of silver and of gold mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in our own time we are supposed to keep our vessels keep our bodies keep everything about us our spirit our souls our bodies separated and keep it holy all onto the coming of our lord jesus christ oh yes so those that have decided to take the vessels of God that have been dedicated for the Father's use and have decided that they have setting it apart for evil, mm. to worship idols, mm. to behold money, mm. gains, and mm. things like this. Mm. Fame. Fame Set and everything. Yeah. The vessels that are supposed to be set apart for the Master's use that have now been are now being used for idols the bible says okay. and we are prophesying today in the name of jesus holy, holy spirit yeah you have been weighed in the balance oh yes okay. and you have been found wanting mm. Mm. the kingdom that you have built mm. has been taken and given to another oh yes says the word of the lord oh yes thank you jesus thank you holy spirit mm. Mm. so they are the handwriting of, of, upon the wall. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We well, thank God for what we have learned today. We appreciate those who are joining us all over the world, uh, people on the body of Christ uh, who have, have follow us on Instagram. We appreciate your presence on our local page or our home page. We appreciate your presence. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Amen. So please go through this video you know, over and over again. Share with your friends. You know, if you are watching on uh, on um on YouTube, please give us thumbs up, give us thumbs down, and tell us where to improve on. Mm -hmm. Leave your comments and uh, inbox us if you have any question. And if you have anything contrary, we too we want to share from your point of views and see what you can also learn one from another. God bless you really for coming. Mm -hmm. Let's just uh, pray briefly for those who are believing God for healing uh, in their bodies. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Amen. Lord, we speak to those who are hearing us this day. As many as are under the sound of our voice that are sick, we speak sound health to your bodies now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning the current pandemic, COVID-19, every virus under the sound of our voice we command you to die by the power of the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the cloud of pandemic lift over homes. In the name of Jesus. Over individuals, over Amen. cities, over nations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This also shall pass. Amen. Let the pass happen now Amen. globally in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That person that is having a pain, I mean, shake bone, I mean, the bone pain, the jaw, the jaw bone is having pain. I see you being healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every cancer of the breast, it's like the right breast. In the name we of command Jesus. healing power to enter into that particular breast right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Be healed of every form of cancer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord. God bless you. Thank you uh, for coming. So as a disclaimer, as a disclaimer, please. Don't leave your medication until you're officially told to do so by your uh, by doctors. And please stay, I mean, stay safe, you know, work with wisdom, especially at a time like this. This current pandemic shall pass. This also shall pass. 
and we will return to normal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Have a lovely time. Thank you. This weekend Amen. and the future times in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Bye. Share body of Christ, let's see. Shane.